It has been 287 days since Chris Chan has been in custody. Welcome to the Chris Chan Update, my name is Gibby. If my voice sounds a little scratchy, it's because I'm just getting over laryngitis. And if my lips look kinda red, it's because I just drank red Kool-Aid. No, I'm not wearing lipstick. Was the culprit right here. Anyway, if you've been following this story, you know that on March 1st, Chris was taken away from the jail that he's been at ever since he was arrested last year, and he was put into what we assume is a mental facility. He stayed there undergoing evaluations for two months until he was returned to the original jail he was at on May 1st. This video is being recorded on May 15th, it'll probably be uploaded on May 16th, uh, but the letter that we're gonna read was actually written on the 10th, so almost a week ago. This is yet another letter from Chris Chan to Kenneth Engelhart. You might remember that the last correspondence between them, Kenneth told Chris that he was no longer interested in talking to him. Kenneth cut ties with Chris, and then almost immediately after, Chris disappeared to a mental facility for two months where he wasn't allowed to write letters. So now Chris is back and he has written this letter to Kenneth. Kenneth, of course, uploaded it on his website, The Onion Farms. So now we're gonna go through. I have not seen this yet. This is gonna be a live reaction from me. And we're going to see what Chris is talking about. So, uh, first we're going to start with actually the outside of the envelope, where you can see that Chris wrote at the top right-hand corner, free issue, comma, please. And then in parentheses he said, or if you insist, you may deduct the postage from my inmate account. Which makes it seem that Chris just isn't bothering to put a stamp on the envelope, because he has the money for it, theoretically. Many spiritual greetings. Now on the right side he has 05, which is May. 10 for the 10th, and then 20 backwards 2 and another 2. I think he puts the uh, those two together like that so it forms a heart, which is part of his logo for the blue heart, or for uh, neo-spiritual Christianity. So I don't think that he's just so silly that he put a 2 as a, as a backwards 2. I think that he did it to draw a heart. He starts the letter by saying, Gana Fa Lani, which is... Um, I believe it's part of the Akashic Records, or else it was one of the other things that Chris is stealing mythos from, and it's just a, uh, a spiritual greeting. So, he's addressing this to Kenneth. To Kenneth and to all of my followers as well. And this letter may be uploaded online. Firstly, I am quite safe and well, and I am humbled and appreciative of thy concerns of my and my body's safety and health. For the time, I am not stating any further details of where and how I was the past two months, nor the details of my case, for even the legal system is most strict on keeping the details private and offline as well. All ye need know, regardless of the foreknown outcome, is that there was absolutely nothing beyond soul bonding that had happened. The leak from last July was false, and a good number of ye all should have known better with good faith in I, instead of succumbing to the demons and devils' temptations of rumors and dramas, and thus failing that divine test." This is something he's been kind of flip-flopping on back and forth for the last couple of months, but it seems like he is now firmly back in the camp of he did not have sex with his mother, which is fantastic. There is no retcon. That is the truth, ultimate. So he's saying that it's not like he did have sex with her in the past, and then that was uh, changed using reality-altering magic. He's saying it's been like that the whole time. Ye all, those who are not left behind, shall have to wait until the public release of the book with my goddess log pages in it months from now, in order to find out the details and further authentic enlightenments for thyselves. This is the second time now he's referenced a book that he's writing, his goddess log, that will theoretically be published when he gets out of jail. Um, we're kind of assuming that he's in contact with someone on the outside who might be helping him turn this into an actual book, or who he may have discussed turning this into an actual book with, but either way, we're gonna actually have to wait until he's out of jail. Especially with the facts present of the shifts and events that have been happening right in front of and around ye all that make the collective shift from 1218's Earth to C-197's Earth, my second coming not far from now, and Judgment Day upon the toxic ones and left behinds, more clear and obvious to end with ye. That whole sentence means literally nothing. I also mentioned the number of months when Sanichu and I were body swapped, and the months from March, crossed out, April, to October 2020, when I, in Sanichu's body, was within a nanosecond frozen subdimension, 
to further develop and harness my own powers and abilities, while also doing so for my son's body and mind. Remember, Chris was uh, possessed by Sonichi during most of COVID. That's what he's referring to. Uh, apparently, his mind was in this other dimension, learning to harness his Jesus powers. These jail months have been that very same training regimen for my own good body, right here. So this time away from y'all in Greater Revelations was meant to be, and as it was then, I shall return to lead y'all not long ago from now. Not long ago from now. So he's saying that he was meant to be gone while he was being possessed by Asanachu, and just like that, he is meant to be gone now while he's in jail. It's gonna make him more magically powerful. Here is a massive ultimate truth for ye all. Why, even I, when I was Jesus Christ in Jerusalem, could not foreknow specifically and exactly the hour and day of my resurrection, and, more presently, my second coming. Even Emmanuel, then and now, no god or goddess or anyone foreknew specifically when, period. And only the specific shifts and events that led up to that event, hence why we wait for the confirmations of these specific shifts and events, and exact the details of the divine plan to counter and clear that event, so there is no population and universe-shattering paradox in our very timeline that would undo, kill, and destroy everything if left unchecked. Chris has said multiple times that he knows that he's going to be found innocent, um, although he's also said that he can't spoil for us what's going to happen with this jail case, and now he's saying that it's impossible to know what time the actual dimensional merge will happen, the same way that Jesus did not know the time of his resurrection, it would apparently cause a universe-ending paradox, would Chris know when the dimensional merge were to happen? Yeah, okay. And if most anyone else on Earth, or any planet or point in the universe in this timeline, foreknew of the Divine Plan's intricate details, and the specific events that need to happen, there is a chance one or more would want to counter and prevent the event themselves. In doing that, they would not only ultimately, paradoxically fail, period, then what's the point? What's the point then? If they have to fail, then who cares if they know? Their misintentioned deed would potentially throw the divine plan askew. How could what? How could it throw the divine plan askew if they would have to fail? Uh, so it would still succeed. But what? This is also why we continue to encourage all of you to have faith in us gods and goddesses. Our divine powers and abilities to prevent the total loss of not only our universes but our timeline as well as well as having faith in letting all that needs to happen and fall into place for your health, safety, and benefit happen. This is also why all fanfiction have been rendered moot for the events in this timeline since August 1st, 2021, until the foreknown time when that shall be safe once again. Okay, okay, just to, just to re go over Chris's religion. He believes that there's a, um, there's an infinite number of parallel universes. Basically, multiverse theory, so anything that could possibly happen, happens everywhere. Uh, so therefore, there is a universe in which the events of any given fictional media happen. So like, there's a My Little Pony universe, there's a Spongebob universe, there's a Spider-Man universe. But, specifically, our universe, which is the main Prime Earth, which gets its number from the uh, Marvel way of numbering universes, we are universe 1218, which in Marvel canon, uh, so we are universe 1218 within Chris Chan canon. Um, we have a sister universe, and it is populated by all fictional characters at once, and that is universe C-197, which gets its numbering from Rick and Morty. So in C-197, it's not just that uh, Spongebob or Spider-Man live there, it's that Spider-Man and Spongebob live there, and Batman, and literally every possible fictional character you can think of live in this one universe, and they're all amalgamated onto one planet, one version of Earth where they all take place at the same time. Um, because all fictional characters live there, it's not just fictional characters who are in published media, it's also uh, fan fiction media. Now, Chris's specific religion is that all creative types on our planet aren't actually creating anything, we're just getting glimpses into that universe. So the reason that we could have multiple canons or multiple continuities for something like Spider-Man, where there's the original comics and then multiple TV shows and now three different <laughs> movie universes that themselves have all crossed over, 
um, is because the creators in this universe are only having glimpses into the other universe where events are really happening, and thus their translations of those events aren't necessarily 100% accurate. Chris saying this, saying fan fictions are on pause, makes it seem like he believes that the creators in our universe aren't just getting glimpses into the other universe, and are instead somehow actually affecting the events that happen in that universe. That's not something he's ever actually been precise about, whether or not when you create something that you're making it happen. Instead, he just has said that you're chronicling it, that you're viewing it happening, and that you're writing it out for other people in our world to see. So this would actually be a different interpretation of the lore that he's been talking about for several years now. So I would love to get a clarification on that, but we're never going to get it. Back to present events. I direct your, and he crosses out your and writes thy, of course he does, thy attention to World War III. I wonder how much Chris knows about world events being in jail. I will say I'm very glad that Chris does not have the chance to watch Doctor Strange 2, otherwise that would probably mess with his mind a lot more. I direct thy attention to World War III, March to May, presently being cold months. COVID bringing forth healthier individuals while dispelling the left behinds and shifting some as well. So Chris is basically talking about like eugenics there. He's saying that um, the people who survived COVID are healthier than those who didn't, which is a good thing. Um, and that shifting some, so uh, when you die, you cross over to the universe with all the fictional characters. So um, if you survived COVID and you're a good person, then you're healthier. So, that, so that's good. Um, and if you died and you're a bad person, then that's good because you're bad. And if you died and you're a good person, then that's good because you went to the Paradise universe. So no matter what, it was a good thing. If we just kill a bunch of people, it'll only ever be a good thing. COVID-19 was a divine test of thy faith, fortitude, endurance, and self-motivation. Regardless of the fact, Sockness had cursed a country with it. Also, the other facets I've previously mentioned, including suddenly becoming ritualistic and random animals suddenly appearing in random places. As Caden had relayed for me, Caden was one of the praetors. As Caden had relayed for me, I had foreknown World War III as why My Little Pony Generation 5 being manifested in 2020 through 2025 was premature and- Okay, oh my god. Chris thinks that the fourth generation of My Little Pony, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, was supposed to go on for several more seasons, and so he's really upset that it ended and that Generation 5 is starting. And um, apparently he said that World War 3 would happen if My Little Pony didn't get four more seasons. And now that World War 3 might actually happen, he's saying it's because they didn't listen to him and they have a new season of My Little Pony. You know, I'd been wondering why Putin decided to invade Ukraine, but uh... Now I understand. It's because of G5 of My Little Pony. He then ends this little section and says, I am serious as I appear authentically in the more recent photo, and then some. This is in reference to his new mugshot where he looks extremely serious, as opposed to his first mugshot where he was smiling. He's serious about World War III and My Little Pony, not about the fact that he's been in jail for almost a year. Should ye all wish for further confirmations and premonition input to confirm these truths and facts, consult with an authentic, highly enlightened slash powerful psychic, including Helena and Pikachu, Spunky the Hyena Doom, and Molly the Medium, or your most local authentic psychic. Yeah, Chris, I uh, don't really think that they want anything to do with you. Now for a most truthful and revealing topic that actually shall confirm a number of details from amongst thy thoughts and pre-August 12th, 2021 fanfictions that I may share now. The history facts about Barbara Ann Weston Chandler, or some of them anyway, he forgot the word them, had any of ye all actually helped and talked with her in person before today, you and he crossed it out, would have got the aura resonant confirmations and similar or other truths and do not troll or bother Joseph Cole Smithy or Barbara for more details or anything. Joseph Cole Smithy, of course, being Chris's half-brother. I tell ye all, truest and fact, as sure as when Barbara at age two years laughed at her silver paint-coated daddy after he survived falling off the roof of their house while painting it, as sure as when their cow was killed by a donkey, literally. The Sunday homemade meals with chicken, mashed potatoes, corn, bread and butter, and green beans. 
Stanley Weston finding their daddy dead on his horse pulled wagon not far from the convenience store in Red Oak, Virginia. He's saying he's going to give us the truth as, as surely as all of these things happened that we'd never heard before. That's some interesting family lore right there. Donkey killed a cow. So Barbara had been born and grew up as child number five out of eight to the Weston family in Red Oak, Virginia on October 1st, 1941. Her life was a redneck simple country one. She had mastered sewing, mending, and making clothes and other farm life facets and church going habits. To note, there are similarities and polar differences between her past and mine, respectively, as I shall write in note to ye all. In her schooling years, especially at high school, Barbara was a very high intellectual, yet she also was a cheerleader for a time. Barbara had two boyfriends in high school, one of which was, I don't care, this part doesn't matter. I am going to read this part because it's disturbing. Now, during high school and prior, Barbara's sisters had spread rumors of her, calling her a slut. But Barbara never had sexual intercourse. She never ever even masturbated. It simply never ever dawned upon her to do so. And it was not against her religion either. Chris is now going to compare himself to his mother, saying, She dated, yet I was naive on the subject of dating and healthy relationships, and I masturbated during our respective high school years, and I was too focused on education to ever seek a relationship or sex. Over her adult years, Barbara had attended and graduated from college, and before meeting Mr. C, parentheses Robert Chu, that's of course being Chris's father, Barbara had seven ex-boyfriends, counting the two in high school and between numbers 3 to 7, and Mr. C as well, they all were selfish types of men, and in their testosterone-occupied selves, they each had never really cared for her pleasure when it came to the sex. Let's talk about his father there, he's calling him selfish. To them, it was more for their pleasure and genetic reproduction intentions. Jerry and Mr. C aside, they were love em and leave em types. Jack Smithy was number 5, I don't really know how Chris can say that the entire phone call with Bella was a lie if, number one, he's regurgitating the same information now, um, but for him to even know this information, it would mean that he had these conversations with his mother, which itself is not really an appropriate conversation. Also to note, after five epic fail relationships on her part, after finding Mr. C, Barbara, in her own words, married him because, quote, he owned a house. And yet theirs, with I under their care, was a ship that lasted with some genuine love. So Barbara only married Robert because he, he had a house and was well off. That's great. Comparison. Barbara had selfish exes with actual in-person relationships and a few weddings. I had hardly anything beyond friendships on authentic, and the relationships I had that went anywhere prior to these days were distant, online, and fake. Hey guys, this is Future Gibby here. My camera overheated at this point, and I lost the rest of the footage, but that shouldn't matter. Let's get back to the letters. I define generational trauma. A noun. A trauma one experiences from the past experiences and aura resonance vibrations from the biological parents or legal guardians that can either be beneficial or sabotaging, depending on the parents. Now, as one may hear from Joseph Cole Smithy's testimony of Barbara as a mother, he had seen and experienced emotional manipulation, some lack of better care, he even called her a pathological liar when it came to asking her about Jack Smithy and other details from his perspective. Barbara would continually lie to Cole about who his father was, and so that's why he accused her of being a pathological liar. No sugarcoating and blunt here from me. In my years, Barbara was caring, but remained some distant emotionally and mentally. She had emotionally manipulated me at times. When I told her of my intentions of going to a convention in another state, she did threaten suicide of herself. She also had raised her voice to me in upset and anger, especially when it came to money. Yeah, you know, th those are the uh, those are the same thing. A parent occasionally yelling at a child and threatening suicide. After the paid sex with the kind Cherokee woman in April 2012, in May I told Barbara about it, and Barbara literally pro pro proportioned 
propositioned me f what? Barbara literally propositioned me for sex by telling me I would have had sex with you myself, Christian. So after Chris told Barb that he had sex with the prostitute, she said, I would have had sex with you myself, Christian. That, obviously Chris is an unreliable narrator, but that's wild. In one aspect of her unconsciousness, Barbara had considered me being a replacement for Mr. C after September 6, 2011, which was his death. So yeah, Barbara, in a way, did become an emotional burden on I. Yet, in despite of the situation, <laughs> in spite of the situation, and I have been personally written to Helberg, that's his lawyer, the story of Barbara in these and similar words in truth. Nobody had interrogated her, quote, because of her age. The legal system, am I right? Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before, but theoretically, both Chris and Barb are equally guilty of a crime if the crime is simply incest. If it's taking advantage of someone because of Barb's mental state, then I see why Chris would have been treated worse, but Barb certainly should have been interrogated. Now you all know. For now, until my safe return to all of ye in light powers divine, I remind thee of one of the new commandments, and introduce to ye all a couple more of them as inscribed on October 14th, 2021. 15. Thou shalt not comment online or offline in hatred, spite, falseness, or without any words of criticism that aren't intentionally, genuinely, meant to be supportive for actual improvements. Number 14. Thou shall not hate thy neighbors or others that share any similarities in race, ethnicity, interest, or whatever else with thee. And thou shall not hate thyself for any of these traits or interests either. Does, it, d does that mean that we can hate people who are of different races? Because I don't... I don't think that that's a good commandment there, Chris. Number 21. Thou need not feel pressured nor obligated to pursue sexual relations. And among all who pressure and talk continuously about sex, please do not speak on and on. And thou need not feel obligated to listen if thou feel uneasy around others when they speak of which. For sexual relations are better when thou and thy partners actually feel appreciative and open, and not pressured by others beforehand. And lastly, to Engelhart, and anyone else with the same or similar ideas, now is not the time to make any lolcal wiki pages on anyone who does not already have such on them, including celebrities and politicians, for at these immediate times, the collective shift and greater events are on and happening, and ye need to be observant and enlightening for thyselves as well as recognizing and dispelling any and all remaining dark, demonic, and devilish influences from deepest within thyselves and thy unconsciousness. Ah, for now, my individuals and followers alike, I farewell, work diligently, thorough and hard for ye all. Be safe and well, Mrs. Jesus Christine Weston Chandler Sonichu, the goddess blue heart of the Commodore consoles, guardian of Sonichu and Rosechu species of Pokemon, thy one avatar, Lord Messiah, Savior, and God of all. That was the only letter we got so far this month, so far since Chris has been back in jail, or at least it's the only one that's been leaked. And I gotta say, that one story about Barb from 2012 or 2011, that that's that kind of changes a lot of stuff, assuming that Chris isn't just making it up now. I'll probably make another video at the end of the month if there's more letters being released, and go back to the monthly format that I was doing. If you want more breaking news, you can follow me on Twitter at GIBI underscore Devin. And if you liked this video, make sure to subscribe. I'm almost at 60,000, and it would be nice to hit that number soon. Thank you.